welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And before we get into today's video, we've got a fantastic announcement about the latest online Yellow Belt course that we've just released. If you go below this video, you will see the link that will take you straight to that Yellow Belt course. And it will also give you access to a 24 hour limited discount offer on the price of this course. This material contains all the techniques that I use 90% of the time with my clients. If you want to start to become a world class technical problem solver, this isn't just a certificate, this is world class skills buried in this course, then this is the course for you. We are delivering some of the best skills online anywhere in the world. Click on the link, get the best yellow belt course you'll ever see right now. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to talk about is the importance or not of doing a normality test. Okay, so people get obsessed with these things. Doing a normality test on your data. Okay, so now in particular, this is related to doing CPK analysis. <clears throat> so this comes from a client. <clears throat> this comes from a client of mine. Um, they they've subcontracted some components. They've sent them to another. Um, they've produced parts as a subcontractor. They've sent them to another site. The site have looked at the data um, from a molding process and it's not normal. And therefore they've, they've then said, well, because it's not normal, your CPK values are no longer valid, yada, yada. So, okay. So we're gonna take a look at, you know, is it really necessary? Is this important? Let's remember what you are doing with a CPK analysis. You've collected some data. Usually a sample. So you've taken a sample between 30 and 50 is fantastic. Now, because you've sampled, what you don't want to do is use the observed range here. You don't want to use the observed range to predict where your extreme results will fall because you will underestimate the spread. So what we therefore do, we model the distribution. Now, in this case, we are going to fit a normal model. We are modeling what we expect to happen if we produce a thousand pieces, two thousand pieces, ten thousand pieces. And then of course what we are doing is we are predicting extremes. We're going to predict the range. Now obviously a prediction it is an estimate of what's going to happen. Obviously your sample is an estimate of what's going to happen. So why do you do the normality test? Well, the normality test would be to say, can I rely on this estimate? Am I going to make an important decision on this data and I'm going to look like an idiot or cost my company bucket loads of cash. All right, so that's why we do a normality test. Now let me draw you the capability data that these guys have been seeing. So they've got capability results that look like this. Okay, and then what they've done is they've done a normality test on this and said it's not normal. I can't rely on the results. Well, if you look at the results, 
the results are predicting something like one defect in a hundred thousand cycles and what the normality test is said, well it's not normal you can't rely on this number okay fair enough ask yourself a question how far am I likely to be out what what is likely to be the error when I when I don't get this estimate so what could it be could it be that I really get four defects in a hundred thousand now that would be out by a factor of fourfold you're 400 percent wrong what's the risk if I'm 400 percent wrong with my defect rate does it make a difference absolutely not does normality matter in this case absolutely not now one of the data sets they sent me did look like this so again superb capability by the way but it was jammed up I don't think we observed any defects but we were jammed up right against the bottom tolerance and again we did a normality test and clearly we had a defect rate associated with that tail I don't know I don't know what the numbers were okay but it, it, it actually doesn't matter look it's making an estimate of the defect rate it's making a prediction can I rely on it well it's not normal so it might make an error so I might miscalculate what's going on here does it still matter now I shouldn't be there look at it this process is brilliantly capable what you should be worrying about is how to center it whether the bloody date is normal or not is absolutely pointless we've got ourselves into a statistical tizzy over something that isn't giving us any problems whatsoever that's going to give you a problem but it ain't going to give you a problem because it's not normal it's going to give you a problem because you're sitting on the bottom tolerance guys can we can we relax about these tests there are times when normality might be might be needed but it's a very rare situation indeed what you're asking yourself the question is can i rely on the prediction so when it makes a prediction like this you want to know that that model because when you do cpk you are modeling what's going to happen is the model reliable now it could be here for instance it's predicting five percent defects in this tail five percent defects in this tail but when you look at the the data the underlying distribution maybe it looks a bit messy like this you know now normality again is normality the issue now the flipping defect rates the issue you know I, I'm gonna say that I've got a 10% defect rate I'm gonna tell my bosses that the risk is that we got a 10% defect rate can I rely on that result can I rely on that number will it be accurate probably not because it's not normal will it change my decision though no I've got to fix that it's a disaster sort it out I've got to fix this it's a disaster sort it out the, the normality test it's only if you, if it's really going to change your your decision if you think it's the difference between spending a lot of money modifying a molding tool and spending no money and deciding to run with it that maybe this might help you question what's going on collect more data by the way better thing to do if you don't if you don't like the normality collect more data and use the observation defect rate then it will tell you what's happening you can decide whether it's painful or whether it's not painful but relax about normality all it's trying to tell you is can I rely on this prediction can I rely on this number sometimes the fact that I can't rely on the number in fact most of the time it doesn't matter 
it doesn't change my decision I have to fix this I have to fix this normality doing a transformation getting something that's normal would not change my decision don't overcomplicate this keep your wits about you look where the data's landing look how much money it's costing you and use the prediction use the modeling to tell you what to do next and that's all you've got to do and then you can keep it simple statistically make brilliant decisions and make a bucket load more cash without tying yourself in knots doing these kinds of things Thank <laughs> you.